Good morning. I know you had a wonderful week this past week, and I know there were so many things that happened that reminded you of all the things that you can be thankful to God for. And we've been talking about being thankful a lot lately. And this week in our Bible story, we are going to learn that it doesn't matter how old you are, you can always thank God for Jesus. We thank God for Jesus. time came for making Mary clean as required by the law of Moses. So Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem. There they presented him to the Lord. In the law of the Lord it says, The firstborn boy in every family must be set apart for the Lord. They also offered a sacrifice. They did it in keeping with the law which says a pair of doves or two young pigeons. In Jerusalem, there was a man named Simeon. He was a good and godly man. He was waiting for God's promise to Israel to come true. The Holy Spirit was with him. The Spirit had told Simeon that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. The Spirit led him into the temple courtyard. Then Jesus' parents brought the child in. They came to do for him what the law required. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them. He said to Mary, Jesus' mother, This child is going to cause many people in Israel to fall and to rise. God has sent him, but many will speak against him. The thoughts of many hearts will be known. A sword will wound your own soul too. There was also a prophet named Anna. She was the daughter of Penuel from the tribe of Asher. Anna was very old. After getting married, she lived with her husband for seven years. Then she was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple. She worshipped day and night, praying and going without food. Anna came up to Jesus' family at that moment. She gave thanks to God, and she spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the time when Jerusalem would be set free. Joseph and Mary did everything the law of the Lord required. Then they returned to Galilee. They went to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was very wise. He was blessed by God's grace.
families. I'm Susan. This is Jackson and Madeline. Mm. We're excited to share a lesson with you today. First, I want you to think about a question and we'll come back to it. Have you ever gotten into a fight with one of your brothers or sisters or friends? Our lesson today is about being a peacemaker. So first, what is peace? And what do you think a peacemaker is? Peace means calmness, happiness, and people getting along. A peacemaker is someone who makes peace between two people and helps others to be happy instead of angry. When two people get into a fight, a peacemaker can help them stop fighting and help them to be friends again and be loving and kind. Jesus was a peacemaker, and each of us can also be a peacemaker. Jesus has told us how. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. So, back to my question. Have you ever gotten into a fight with one of your brothers or sisters or friends? Have you ever gotten in a fight? Yeah. I think we can all say that we have. How do you make up and find peace with that person again? As a peacemaker, you can tell them you're sorry. You can stay calm and use kind words. You can ask yourself, is this what Jesus would do? Now consider this situation. You're playing with a new toy when your sister comes over and grabs it out of your hands because she wants it. If you're a peacemaker, you would stay calm and show your sister that you didn't like that. Using kindness, you could suggest that you could wait patiently and take turns. Or exploding in anger, yelling, or hitting, that would not be the ways of peace. And when you go to make peace with someone, Jesus will go with you. He lives in your heart, and he will help you to know what to say to someone when you try to make peace with them. By making peace with other people, you'll be like Jesus. So be a peacemaker. Bye-bye. We thank God for Jesus. And I want to be faithful. I want to be. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Hey guys, it's time to do our Bible point in sign language today. And Miss Tina and I are going to teach it to you. To, this week is, we thank God, God for Jesus. Jesus. Because that is the biggest thing we would ever want to thank Him for. Absolutely. All right, you ready? Yes. Here we go. Yes. Remember, we is three fingers. It's we, we thank God, God for, for Jesus. Jesus. And remember, we learned Jesus. Miss Tina taught it to us not long ago. We touched the middle of our hands. Let's try it all together. You ready? Right, here we go. All right. We, we thank, thank God, God for, for Jesus. Jesus. Great. One more time. Here we go. We, we thank God, God for, for Jesus. Jesus. Yay! Good Don't job. forget to thank Him. and I'm the mom of these fantastic kids, Caleb, Josh, Benji, Anna, and Gabby. Well, I'm gonna share a beatitude with you, but before I do, I wanted to tell you what it is I love most about you. I love that you love and want to follow Jesus. You know, I love and want to follow Jesus too. I mean, who better to follow? Jesus was perfect. He always did the right thing. We call that righteousness. And even though you and I will never be perfectly righteous like Jesus, it sure does make God's heart happy when we're trying to do the right thing, like Jesus did. And it usually makes the people around us happy too. I mean, aren't mom and dad really happy when you obey right away? And aren't friends happy when you're playing nicely? You bet. But you know, there will be times in our lives when people are actually mean to us for doing the right thing. And we call that persecution. It's a big word. And it's not a happy situation, but God has a promise for it. So let's read Matthew 5.10. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So in easy words, that means you're blessed if you're picked on for doing the right thing, because God has the promise of heaven for you. All right, that's good news. But maybe you're still wondering what exactly persecution might look like in your life. Well, here's an example. Maybe you see someone being called names or being pushed around by other kids. 
And instead of just standing back and staying out of the trouble, you step in and you try to protect them. And that group of kids starts picking on you. Well, that's an example of persecution, being picked on or hurt for doing the right thing. Or maybe you're at a friend's house and they wanna watch a video or play a game that you know mom and dad wouldn't approve of. And so instead of saying yes, you do the right thing and you say, no, I can't do that. Um, and your friend stops being a friend all of a sudden. They make fun of you and call you a baby or they stop playing with you and they don't invite you over anymore. That's persecution for doing the right thing. But remember, God's got your back. He has an incredible promise for us. So keep doing the right thing because you will be blessed when you do the right thing, even if other people are being mean to you for it. And I wanna be faithful. I wanna be All right, let's pray. Father God, Father God, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the blessing of family and friends. Thank you for the blessing of family and friends. Thank you most of all for the blessing of Jesus. Thank you most of all for the blessing of Jesus. Help us to love and serve like him. Help us to love and serve like him. Amen. Amen.
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Now I'm going to go play with my balloons. Have a great week. I love you.